No. Hi, I'm Chris Wilson from Grinding Gear Games. Thanks for joining Hi. us for today's live stream as we reveal our upcoming expansion, The Forbidden Sanctum, which launches on December 9th on PC and Mac and on December 14th on console. Wow. Twitch drops are enabled on today's live stream, so make sure you follow the instructions below in order to claim your Bloodguard wings. Those look cool. Here's what you can expect from today's live stream. What the we'll fuck? We'll start by debuting the trailer for The Forbidden Sanctum, and we'll then do a deep dive on the link <laughs> itself. We'll cover this expansion's new endgame revamps and content, and then we'll have a look at all the new skills we're introducing. We'll then reveal some new unique items and the massive buffs and rarity adjustments we have made to a variety of endgame unique weapons. We'll then briefly Whoa. cover some balance topics that we have posted articles about recently. Jewels, curses, and the replacement of the Arch Nemesis monster mod system. Finally, we'll discuss the upcoming release of the optional Ruthless game mode before touching on some quality of life improvements and the new supporter packs. The live stream concludes with a Q&A session between Ziggy D and me, where we'll answer questions from Twitch chat. Then we'll drop the full patch notes. Let's get started with a trailer for the Forbidden Sanctum, which launches in one week. Add oh my. No way, did it? Let me let me try to cancel. If I can. Cancel. Many have met their fate here in the shade of Fel Shrine. So step lightly. I can't cancel. But here you are bound by new rules. Sorry. My rules. What the fuck? Each step with gold to tempt That looks like you. June. A foe to wound you. A curse what the? to spite you. But do Alters. not give up. For vast Traps. riches await the bold. Rewards? Pillage this sanctum if you must. Holy... What's that? And one day you may uncover its secrets. Oh, that's so cool. Two, three, four, maybe? Two new skills? What? Starfork, right? <laughs> what is that? No! No! <laughs> what the fuck? What is that? It did like a, a snake! Nah. Atlas passive tree changes too? That was abyss changes. Abyss nodes changed. What just happened? Bruh. What is this? <laughs> Holy shit. The Forbidden Sanctum is an old Templar enclave, long what? rumored to be hidden beneath the Fell Shrine ruins. Abandoned for a long time, it is now controlled by a malevolent entity. In this league, you'll explore it, find out its secrets, and deal with the evil that lurks there. The Sanctum Challenge League is a roguelike game, played out one room at a time as you Whoa. explore Rayclast and the Atlas in Path of Exile. In every area or map you enter, you can make a choice of which room in the Sanctum you will explore next. On the Sanctum map, you can see the oh contents God, of a few rooms ahead, enabling you to plot a path through its dangerous halls. I, I knew it. And the Sanctum is dangerous. Like most roguelikes, you should not expect to be able to complete it right. on your first try. Getting to the deeper floors requires experience, knowledge, and luck. You should expect that your early attempts will fail, but over time, you'll be able to push yourself farther and farther. As you progress deeper into the Sanctum, you'll find a variety of treasures that will help it's you corrupted eventually fight your ways to the way. dangers that await you at the end of its four floors. Eventually, by endgame, you may be able to push through all four floors to face the final boss. Every roguelike needs a resource to help you track how well the run is going. In the Forbidden Sanctum, it is your resolve, indicated by this bar here. As you explore the Sanctum, your resolve is threatened Whoa. by the dangers within. When you lose all of your resolve, your Sanctum run ends. New attacks. 
new spells. Look at that. Your level of resolve is maintained between consecutive rooms on your run, but is only shown when you're in the sanctum itself. That's a trap, right? The resolve right? mechanic applies equally to all build archetypes. Your resolve is reduced when you are hit by monsters or environmental hazards in the sanctum, and these telegraphed attacks are not affected by regular Path of Exile defensive oh mechanics, my such God. as evasion, armor, or block. While these attacks do some nominal damage to your regular life, the bulk of their impact is against your resolve. This mechanic provides a mechanism for tracking your progress between rooms, where your regular Ultimatum. life form would long ago have been recovered. Another aspect of the resolve system is that characters who are struggling can be ejected from the sanctum without actually having to die, Ultimatum. avoiding experience loss or hardcore death. So maintaining a healthy level of resolve is key as you navigate the sanctum, and that means making careful choices of what rooms you enter. Let's have a look at some of the things that sanctum rooms can contain. <laughs> oh, Afflicted yes. rooms cause you to gain an affliction when you enter. Afflictions oh. make your sanctum run more difficult. For example, reducing your resolve recovery, what the fuck? Causing rewards to become hidden on the Sanctum map. Okay. Or causing Sanctum rooms to spawn volatile anomalies that follow you. No! These minor afflictions accumulate <laughs> as you get deeper and deeper into a run, making it more challenging. No. Major afflictions exist and are a big deal. They have significant consequences, such as entirely preventing the recovery of resolve. So, a Sanctum run gets harder and harder as you pick up more afflictions. Sounds great. <laughs> every roguelike Sounds needs terrible. a way for you to gain power throughout your run. In the Forbidden Sanctum, that system is boons. Boons, boons. are beneficial buffs that help you as you progress through the Sanctum. Minor boons make <gasps> things a little easier, such as slowing down monsters or adding a special shield to your resolve called Inspiration. Major boons don't come along often, but have large effects, such as preventing you from They're receiving geniuses. more minor afflictions, or recovering your resolve to 50% the next time you run out. Due to the vast variety of afflictions and boons, no two runs are the same. Generally speaking, your best sanctions so are the ones where the afflictions you choose have little effect on you, and the boons either counteract them or have a large benefit for the strategy you're running. Some rooms in the sanctum oh contain a fountain God. which will restore some of your lost resolve. Others contain afflicted fountains that restore even more resolve at a cost. Rooms with a treasure reward contain chests full of the Templar Aureus currency, a type of gold coin they used for commerce within their sanctum. Special You'll also currency. find some Aureus coins from monsters that you kill as you explore. These oh, are picked up rogue automatically, rogers. like Azerite, and are not tradable, oh. and like your afflictions and boons, are lost when your sanctum run ends. Some rooms contain a merchant who accepts your Aureus coins in exchange for boons. It's sulfur. Plan your purchases carefully, as you may encounter the merchant again later on with even more expensive <gasps> boons to purchase. Occasionally, Kadir the sinister back. powers controlling the sanctum will present you with a choice of making an accursed pact. You are given yeah. several pacts to choose from, and can even opt to take all that you are offered. All pacts have a big upside and a big downside, such as exchanging yeah, a portion of your maximum so resolve for a random major boon. It's very dangerous to make a pact, but if you pick the right circumstances, your gamble could pay off. Gambling. In addition to rewards that help you progress through the sanctum, many rooms let you immediately receive Path of Exile currency items, but with a twist. Whenever you're offered some currency items that you can receive right away, uh -oh. you are also offered a more valuable option that will be waiting fuck? for you after the boss fight at the end of the current floor of the sanctum. It's ultimatum, it's but- if you fail your run before you reach and defeat the boss, you will not receive the reward you This picked. is gonna be so Later funny! Later on, you're offered the extreme temptation of getting a massive currency reward that is conditional on completing your entire it's so sanctum good. run without failing. <laughs> okay, At a specific point in the Forbidden Sanctum storyline, you'll discover a special altar that Templar relics can be placed on. What? These relics directly affect your Sanctum runs and are not lost when a run ends. They persist throughout the Upgrade. league as a permanent source of meta yeah. progression. Acquiring new and better relics is one of the ways you can push farther and yeah, farther yeah. with each run you try. Or like rogues. Relics cannot be crafted and cannot gear. be traded, as they represent your personal the progression charms is a better the example, yeah. You'll accumulate more than you can use simultaneously, so you'll have options to fine-tune your strategy from run <laughs> to run. It's charms. You can store your extra relics in the Relic Locker, a free storage space like the Expedition Locker. We don't Holy want to spoil shit. important story details, but the end boss of the Forbidden Sanctum can drop unique items from a pool exclusive to this league. What? Today we'd like to show you a unique amulet called Eternal Damnation. This amulet offers a powerful way to gain additional elemental mitigation, by introducing the concept of elemental damage reduction. Despite the drawback of reducing your maximum resistances, if you have sufficient chaos resistance, this is more than compensated Wait, for. Wait, Zabakwa? Because of the roguelike nature of the Forbidden Sanctum, 
Defeating the boss of a floor is a difficult achievement and hence rewards the <laughs> block experience. What? You may fail on the way, so if you do manage it, expect just a good general, experience even. boost for your achievement. You wouldn't really want to convert it. We're just getting Another high chaos. Another reward so. you can find is a special type of relic called a sanctified relic that has mods that directly affect your character's build. You can only unlock one slot for this type of relic, and while these relics can't be crafted through conventional means, you may find special reward rooms in the sanctum that can modify them. These relics exist for this league only and provide a boost to character power for players who are able to master the sanctum. Okay. The so Sanctum don't League offers a broken experience about it, that tempts but you into taking risks and rewards you if those pay off. It's cool. There's a lot to explore in the Sanctum, and we can't wait to hear about your experiences wow, they, next so week. Good. In each expansion leading up to Path of Exile 2's release, we're improving Path of Exile's endgame, with new content to explore and improvements to how you customize your endgame experience. In the Forbidden Sanctum expansion, we're revamping the Atlas Tree, reworking how Eldritch Altars function, and are introducing two new Atlas memories. More memories. The Atlas tree is generally working really well, but has a few problems we'd like to address. The tree offers you the ability to specialize in killing pinnacle bosses, providing extra rewards when you do so. While this sounds good on paper, it creates a situation where you're incentivized to specialize your tree for regular mapping, save up all of your boss fights, then respec fully yep. into boss mode, and then do all of your saved up yep. boss fights before specking back again. Ideally, the design of the Atlas tree would let you spec into one build and then just play the game. Yeah! We have removed all boss bonuses from the Atlas Tree, what? and have baked some of them into the actual base properties of the boss Oh, ones. okay. For example, you don't need to allocate the gaze yeah, into the Yeah, it makes so much sense, thank you! makes the Thank, you. Like to drop a watch's eye, thank as he just you. has that drop chance built in now. Oh, the Atlas Tree is now focused on allowing you to specialize into content that you encounter in every map. It just makes sense! We also want you to be able to specialize into your favorite leagues even more deeply on the Atlas Tree. For Whoa. each of the ten leagues that the tree lets you disable, we've added a bunch more passives to the tree. That one's These not new that passives crazy. allow you to increase the league spawn chance to much higher That's levels than crazy. currently possible, and juice the league even That's further not that than crazy. before. We're making a number of 10%. changes to Eldritch Altars that mostly affect their rewards, but will also affect gameplay decisions you make involving them. Some of the key changes include splitting up the basic currency, scarab, and divination card rewards to be Chaos explicit or... in their description of what rewards you'll get. <laughs> For example, instead of map bosses dropping three unknown basic currency items, the altar specifically says which currency item they'll drop. As part of this change, we've removed some of the lower value yet quite common currency <laughs> rewards from the pool, such as orbs of augmentation and orbs of transmutation. Speaking of scarabs, these will be less available from altars, but we've improved their availability this elsewhere. This manifesto. Rusted scarabs can now drop from the core drop pool, and we've added a vendor recipe that allows you to upgrade your scarabs up to gilded, using the normal 3 to so 1 good. ratio. You can also perform this action from your fragment tab using the new upgrade button. We have made reward types exclusive to different influences, so that you know which influence type to invest in if you want to target farm a certain reward. To give you a specific example, if you run maps influenced by, say, Eater of Worlds, you'll see divine orbs from the basic currency reward more than twice as often as before. We've also rebalanced rewards so that choices that affect boss drops or influence monster drops are comparatively more valuable. The Wrath of the Cosmos Keystone has been reworked. Previously, it was so rewarding that players felt obligated Bender to use awesome. it despite its extreme level of difficulty. It has retained the risk versus reward element, but with the overall intensity toned down. <laughs> you can now also get awakened <laughs> gems from defeating Maven Witness map bosses. This additional reward helps further balance the expected returns from the various types of influence. For more detail on these changes, check out the balance manifesto we posted last week. Damn. Awaken gem off that. In dude. the Lake of Calandra expansion, we introduced Atlas memories. When applied to your Atlas, they unlock a sequence of maps that tells the story of an NPC's past. These stories manifest as specialized encounters that involve a new challenge and exciting rewards. In this expansion, we've introduced two new Atlas memories, describing events related to beastry and domination. Uh... The beastry memory line allows you to capture harvest monsters as beasts for your menagerie. Wow! These harvest beasts can be used in nine new beast crafting recipes. These recipes cover an array of options. For example, you can remove one of the special modifiers from a Watcher's Eye Jewel and then add another. This can have potent results, but won't affect the life, mana, or energy shield modifiers. What the fuck? You can re-roll an Awakened Gem from one type to another. What? Another example is that you can also re-roll a Synthesis Implicit modifier. If your item has more than one Synthesis Whoa! Implicit, it will randomly re-roll one of them. 
The Domination Atlas memory thrusts you into a tunnel of pantheon gods that stand watch over their shrines. Like regular shrines, these are guarded by monsters and emit a buff that empowers the monsters until you claim that what buff yourself. What the fuck is that? This Atlas memory introduces a new set of shrines with specialized buffs, guarded by rare monsters that drop tantalizing rewards. The Forbidden this Sanctum League expansion is insane. introduces a new type of shard that can drop from harbingers. This is real shards. endgame. When combined together into a full currency item, you get the Fracturing Orb, which behaves the same as the Fracturing Craft from Harvest. It can be used on any rare item with at least four this modifiers. This is the real endgame. When the orb is applied, it locks one of the modifiers in place so that further crafting efforts do not affect that modifier. Items fractured in this way can only have one fractured modifier. Previously, this crafting option was gated behind the Oshabi fight in Harvest. Now that it has been rehomed to Harbinger, the Harvest crafting option is no longer available. This means that you'll be able to use your Harvest Life Force and Ashabi kills on other crafts. Because Fracturing Shards drop from Harbingers, you'll be able to target farm them by specking into Harbinger content on your Atlas tree. The Forbidden Sanctum expansion introduces a number so of good. new skill gems. In addition to some new melee Val skills we'll discuss later in the livestream, there are two Holy totally shit. new skills that we'd like to unveil today. How many? Volcanic Fissure is a new fiery slam skill that can be used with staves, maces, axes, and unarmed attacks. That's cool looking. Strike the ground to create a chasm that winds towards your target. This chasm can path around corners before erupting as the fissure gets as close as it can reach. It releases a burst of fiery projectiles that explode on striking the ground. That's like Enemies molten hit by strike multiple range. Will take a lot of stacked damage. Use it up close for reliable bursts of damage, or aim far away to damage a large. Molten area. strike is back. Frozen Legion is an unusual spell, summoning a ring of icy statues that attack with your own weapon damage. The skill has multiple cooldown stacks and consumes what all the cooldown uses at once to summon a statue for each available cooldown. The statues perform a sweeping ice slash, and these sweeps can overlap, resulting in multiple hits against targets. That's close really to you. cool looking. The spell can be used with staves, maces, and axes. The skill is particularly powerful with slow, heavy weapons, as while the statues will use your attack speed, you should instead prioritize the spell's own cast time and cooldown. That looks really cool. This expansion also introduces Imagine many with, new Imagine um, with the Cyrus Sword. Skills. As you know, 18 of them. A Val skill gem grants you both the Val and regular version of the skill. As you kill enemies, the gem charges up with their souls, and after a certain number are collected, the Val skill can be used once. Most yeah. of the new Val skills introduced in this expansion are melee skills, and this results in okay. an indirect buff to any melee builds that use one of these skills. Yeah. Where previously you'd just be using your melee skill to kill enemies, you now get to periodically use a superpowered like version a potion. of the skill. Or if like you like ability. Flicker Strike, you'll love Val Flicker Strike, because it really dials up the concept of letting fate take the wheel. We could use Our that. Flicker Strike causes you to flicker dozens of extra times, slashing enemies. During this time, you don't deal any damage to the enemies you slash. You're quite vulnerable due to not leeching or generating fortify stacks. Let me... <laughs> when you finish flickering, if you survived, of course, you'll be rewarded with a single with huge minions? hit of damage against each enemy you slashed. <laughs> Val Cleave is a new Val skill that buffs the behavior of its non-Val version, in a similar way to how Val Reeve what the works. Fuck? Val Cleave triggers two buffs. One when you kill a rare enemy, and one when you kill either a rare or unique enemy. Whoa! The latter is a strong buff to regular cleave, which you can keep up almost permanently if you're able to kill rare or unique enemies often enough. That's the a real cleave killing buff. The a rare enemy is that you get to steal its mods for a time. You can enjoy part of the power of having a headhunter without actually needing to find one. Overall, Val Cleave is a pretty powerful upgrade to any melee build that could run cleave. That plus two radius buff is looking pretty good now, right? Don't hurt me. <laughs> we'll showcase the other new Val skills we're introducing over the coming week. The Forbidden Sanctum expansion introduces over 15 new unique items, from Mercy. Sanctum exclusive uniques to ones that can be found from Path of Exile's pinnacle bosses. I'd like to show you three examples of these, designed by winners of our prior league's boss kill races. Progenesis is a unique amethyst flask that was designed by Ben and drops from the Uber Maven. It's a defensive flask that grants a mini version of the petrified blood effect, but without requiring you to be on low life. This is a useful tool to prevent you getting one shot by large amounts of incoming wow. damage in scary situations. Rational Doctrine is a unique That's tool that OP. was designed by Rawlings and drops from Uber Venarius. By manipulating your attributes, you can change how this tool behaves. While the ideal dream outcome is that you manage to get your strength and intelligence tied for highest, enabling both of the benefits simultaneously, oh, that's so the sick. jewel is still very powerful if it only grants What's your profane? choice of permanent consecrated ground or permanent profane ground. What's profane ground? Entropic Devastation is a pair of unique gloves that were designed by Gucci Pradas and dropped from the Uber Shaper. 
Currently, the ways to get Spell Impale are very limited. These gloves provide the powerful property of causing all of your spells to impale on crit. So let's talk about unique Does that weapons, work on minions? Specifically, endgame unique no. weapons. In many ways, the weapon is the most iconic and important item on a character, so it's very important that we make them exciting and worthy of their unique status. While some unique weapons have special properties that enable entirely new builds, others are best compared to powerful rare items as a primary source of your character's damage. Profane ground. We have to be very careful when pitching the power level of these unique weapons. If they're not powerful enough, then they're useless and are ignored. But if they're too powerful, then they discourage entire archetypes of characters from trying to find or craft rare weapons. Interestingly, the above problem doesn't apply to belts. Despite Mageblood and Headhunter both <laughs> existing as extremely powerful unique items, people still craft plenty of rare belts. That's because Mageblood and Headhunter are extremely rare, and people don't actually expect they'll reliably get one in a league. Players tend to treat them as luxury upgrades to their build, rather than something they're certain to get. In this expansion, we're promoting 10 iconic but underused what unique the weapons fuck? to the same tier of rarity as Mageblood and Headhunter. We are buffing them a gigantic amount and are making them incredibly hard to find. Remember when Starforge used to be an exciting item? Well, after this change, it certainly is again. It still drops exclusively from the Shaper and the Uber Shaper. That's but it'll a lot take of damage. A lot of runs or a lot of luck to earn it. Six ninety. Over the next week, we'll reveal the other unique weapons that have been massively buffed. We have targeted around ten iconic underused unique weapons and have generally buffed only their damage stat, but by yeah. a lot. Yeah, you buffed We've made Kingmaker a of damage. To jewels that are covered in a recent balance manifesto. But in case you missed it, we want to quickly summarize what the changes are. Our AG is going to be a Giga Chad now. We have made jewels what a the fuck? Source of ailment My AG is going to solo everything. The of ailment focused jewel modifiers. AG build. New modifiers that enable mitigation to a wider variety of ailments than before. <laughs> We've King also maker. removed some ailment mitigation modifiers. But it's rare and expensive. That were only oh no. Jewels through corruption because there are now better options through the regular jewel mod. That's bad. This also means that other desirable corruption modifiers, like immunity to corrupting blood, are more likely to roll. On an AG. We want the moment of finding a unique jewel to be way more exciting than it currently is. We've added a handful of new, very powerful unique jewels and have removed That's some okay. old, less interesting ones. An example of oh. one of these new unique <laughs> jewels is Fire Song, which propagates any modifiers to your ignite mitigation to other elemental ailments. If you're able to substantially reduce the duration of ignites on you, then you can use Fire Song to basically shrug off any elemental ailment. For full information about King the other Maker's changes dead. to unique jewels, check out the Balance Manifesto post we made recently. We've That's rebalanced fun. curses to make them stronger where they matter most against unique monsters and pinnacle bosses. We have buffed several hex-related unique items and reworked unique items that previously interacted with Doom. To replace the Doomsday Keystone passive, we yep. have brought back a version of an iconic curse-related keystone from the past. We've introduced some powerful new unique items that's that interact so cool. with hexes, which we'll reveal in the lead up to launch. For more details on changes to curses, check out the balance manifesto we posted recently, or the patch notes that will come out after the live stream concludes. When we first created the Arch Nemesis monster mod system, our goal was to improve Path of Exile's outdated set of monster mods with new and interesting mechanics that have modern game balance. We feel that Arch Nemesis did introduce a lot of interesting mechanics, but it unfortunately had several of its own problems. We have replaced Arch Nemesis with a system that is more similar to the way monster mods worked in the past. The new monster mods are a lot simpler. They now each do one thing and very it's clearly still said state what they do. Each encounter with a rare monster is now less complex it's still and says is easier hasted. to understand in the heat of combat compared to Arch Nemesis. You'll still encounter challenging Energy combinations shield of mods aura. from time to time. But this emergence temporal will be rarer proximity than shield Nemesis. lightning mirage when hit and varied with moments that get your heart racing but without the frustrations of the arch nemesis with system. a cooldown let's talk about rewards. it's like a one second under cooldown. arch nemesis it often felt mandatory it doesn't say to bring that in it's a magic hidden. find culling character to kill some monsters for you in order to maximize your rewards in the new system we've added a significant pool of new rewards to rares but the reward that is on the monster is hidden and not associated with a specific mod so you don't know what kind of rewards you will get until you kill the monster rare monsters with more mods are more likely to have these special hidden reward bonuses to find out more about other balance changes that are taking place in the forbidden sanctum check out the patch notes which will be available when the live stream ends over the last year or so some of our senior developers have been tinkering with a more challenging way to play path of exile We've been publicly alpha testing this mode, known as Ruthless, for the last month, and are planning to make it available to anyone who's interested alongside the launch of the Forbidden Sanctum next week. 
Ruthless is an optional additional character flag like Hardcore or Solo Cell Found that completely changes how Path of Exile feels to play. Ruthless is a lot more difficult than regular Path of Exile, but it doesn't achieve this by making the monsters harder to kill. It instead focuses on reducing character power through extreme item scarcity, limited crafting, and many other changes such as support gems being drop only. We've posted an article about the philosophy and rules of Ruthless on pathofexile.com slash ruthless. We plan to release this mode alongside the Forbidden Sanctum expansion in a week. In addition to being a character flag like Hardcore or Solo Self Found, it's also available as a modifier I just thought of Ultimatum. Leagues. To be a nice clear, mild. the Forbidden Sanctum League content can be played in Ruthless with appropriately balanced rewards. Ruthless is still very experimental during 320, and we won't be afraid to make mid-league balance changes to it during this experimental phase. Ruthless is Whoa. not for everyone, but so far it has found a supportive and growing group of players who enjoy the additional challenge that it brings. If it sounds like something you're interested they in, can then try change it out next it, time you're looking for a new way to enjoy Path of Exile. Anyway. This expansion also contains a number of small quality of life improvements. Some examples are, Divine Vessels can now be used by right-clicking them rather than taking wow. them to sin. On the player overhead life bar, the energy shield bar is split into a separate bar. You can now right-click an itemized Temple of Atsuatl to see its layout. And most importantly, Beast you crafting couldn't? recipes that add mods to flasks now actually say what the mods do. We'll post more information about these and other quality of life that improvements temple one, I thought you could. release. Today we're launching two new series of supporter packs, the Forge and Gemling packs. Each oh, you could do that with the lake. Each full face value and points, plus several exclusive microtransactions. These packs will only be available for the duration of a Sanctum Challenge League and will leave these the store be forever insane. in three months. As Wait, always, what, these microtransactions this? are entirely cosmetic and do not affect your character's progression or power. The Forge series of supporter packs contains six exclusive microtransactions. Oh, hell yeah. The clockwork back attachment ramps up as you build a kill Don't be a melee weapon. Pressure and releasing it when your streak ends. Kill streak might work for us. Oh, what the fuck? The Delirious Hideout decoration lets you summon Delirium Fog in your hideout at will. What? Complete with strange voices and terrifying apparitions. Feeling okay? You're looking a little pale. Exile. This is so cool. The Forge Guard armor set summons a hammer and anvil so that everyone nearby can watch you craft. <laughs> Oh, no. Oh, no. The ethereal fusing effect turns your item linking attempts what? into a spectator sport. If you manage to hit a six link, people watch you even prompted to send a congratulatory they can message. Do this? No way! No way! Summoning the crow storm portal effect causes a murder of crows to erupt from the portal. The portal becomes dormant if you are too far away from it, causing the crows to take to the skies. The High Templar weapon effect smites the undead you fight and scours the souls of those you What the rest. fuck? Look at that. The Gemling pack series also has six exclusive microtransactions. The Beehive weapon effect lets your weapon play host to a swarm of angry bees, which erupt from the hive whenever you hit an enemy with the weapon. Critical hits cause the hive to send out its best warriors. The Stampede Quicksilver Flask makes you the leader of your own wow, personal rower. Wow, we're a herd. beast. Activating the flask causes a host of ghostly <laughs> rowers to charge alongside you. This is the Gemling Artificer armor That's set. That's so good. It is inlaid with gems that match the gems you've socketed in your items. With that? Crafting gems with gem cutters prisms, vial orbs, or regrading lenses visualizes the process for all to see. This armor set also includes alternate gem level up effects. Prospero's ring blesses you with a constant shower of coins, and it helps you thank I'm players you traded with through a hearty fist bump. <laughs> the consuming ooze pet bounces you alongside get scammed? you and devours corpses in your wake, spitting out a tidy pile of bones. Finally, this pack allows you to reunite with Kadero Perandus, inviting him to your hideout as a vendor. In addition to buying items from you and using his connections to accept your divination cards, He'll That's provide commentary pay to win. on your goods, equipment, and anything else he sees fit to judge you for. That might be a little too much to drink, even for me. Kadiro has hundreds of lines of voice acting. What? Oh, a mighty headhunter! I'm so just a vendor. Come on, man. Try the to voice lines. The brain fragments splatter everywhere. 
You wouldn't want to sully your armor. These new packs are available right now at pathofxhole.com slash purchase. They're both Purchases good. like these directly fund the ongoing development of Path of Exile 1 and 2, and we really appreciate your support. Meanwhile, the Knight and Rogue packs leave the store forever in one week, so now is your last chance to purchase them. The Calandra edition of Kyrix Vault Pass is only available until the end of the Calandra League, and will be replaced with a new set of unique items when the Forbidden Sanctum launches. By the way, we're hoping to film Season 11 of Build of the Week once the Forbidden Sanctum comes out. If you want to submit your build for the season, share your build guide on the class forums on pathofexile.com. Next up, we've got the Q&A with Ziggy D. Once that ends, we'll post the full patch notes for the Forbidden Sanctum. Over the next week, our community team will post the expansion's challenge rewards, information on how to update your item filters, all new and changed gems, and information on how to prepare for launch. On launch weekend, we expect to release the new mystery box and we'll follow up with the new Kyrix Vault Pass in the days after launch. Thanks for joining us and checking out the Forbidden Sanctum. We can't wait to join That's you in Ray Class on December 9th. We'll begin so the Q&A shortly, so please get your questions ready in chat. No golem jewel. I told you they're just gonna. We're just gonna leave it till the league, and we're gonna have to find it. Which uh, someone else is gonna find it. I'm not gonna find it first. <laughs> they always find it. <laughs> Control of minion. Golem jewel. That's crazy though. There's so much shit. So many changes. So much new stuff. The memories alone. That's so cool. The new season. The dungeon 